There is a great deal of concern that with new communication technologies, such as the internet, mobile phones, and social media, something important is being lost. This something is often referred to as social capital. Social capital encompasses the resources that you can access from people in your social network. People that you know, online or offline, including your friends, family, colleagues and other acquaintances. These social ties are important because they provide social support, such as advice, companionship and tangible aid, deliver valuable information, such as a lead on a new job or health information, and enables the ability to mobilize for collective action, whether it is neighbors working to solve a local problem or a large-scale protest. Social capital can be divided into bonding and bridging social capital. Bonding social capital refers to resources that are accessible from one's closest, most homogeneous relationships. Because of the intimacy and similarity of these ties, this type of social capital is often associated with trust, shared norms, and being part of a dense network of connections. Bridging social capital includes those resources most likely to come from weaker ties. Because weak ties tend to come from participation in diverse, loosely connected networks, bridging social capital tends to be related to activities like volunteering and civic engagement. Social capital can be studied by measuring the structure of people's personal networks. The presence of close, densely knit ties is a good indicator of bonding social capital, while the presence of diverse, weak ties is a good measure of bridging social capital. Contrary to the fears of many, Professor Keith Hampton and his colleagues have found that the use of many new communication technologies are related to higher levels of both bonding and bridging social capital. Internet use in general, and social media use in particular, is associated with a larger number of close, core network members. Internet and social media users tend to report that they have higher levels of bonding social capital. They report more overall social support, and specifically more emotional support and companionship. However, the relationship between social media use and social capital can be indirect. Many social media activities, such as blogging and photo sharing, are not directly related to knowing more diverse people. Rather, people who do these activities increase their social capital indirectly by spending more time in traditional social settings associated with having a diverse social network, such as participating in voluntary groups and spending time in public places. As a result, social media use can directly and indirectly relate to higher levels of bridging social capital. For more research on social capital and new communication technologies, visit the website of Professor Keith Hampton at www.mysocialnetwork.net.